Dear Lord Jesus, come by y'all today. If you don't help me, my Lord, I won't be able to stand. So I bid the speedy admittance into your house and sanctuary on this 20th day, October 2019. All for the sake of count of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. My friends, today is an extra special day inside the sanctuary recording studio of the New Greater New Bethel Baptist Church of Linden, Alabama. We just celebrated in the open presence of the heavenly host, a homecoming just yesterday. John the Revelator said that there were some coming from the east, some from the west, some from the north, some from the south. They were all kindred and relations. We gathered. And I'm still to tell you the truth, I'm still on a spiritual high. And I wish that I could package this message and put it into the bosom of everyone who attended the homecoming on yesterday. But I can hear uh, the pastor, oh, deceased pastor from Menden, Louisiana, saying that there's a home coming, but one day there's going to be a home going. And everybody that you see at the home coming, huh, you will not see them at the home going. So, my friend, let us so live <laughs> that we will meet again in the celestial city. Text for today's message is lifted out of the book of James, chapter number one and verse 27, where we find these words. It says there, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Keep himself unspotted from the world. Few words were omitted from that reading, but some things you have to dig out of God's word for yourself. I'm in a hurry. I'm preaching in a hurry. Three minutes gone. Subject for the day's message is the kind of religion we need today, part three. We've already uh, considered the need for a personal religion the need for a purifying religion. But today, I want to step on it a little bit and talk about the need for a positive religion. Well, why is that so, Reverend? My friends, we need a positive religion because our Bible gives us some certainties. I better spell that word. C-E-R-T-A-I-N-T-I-E-S. Our Bible gives us certainties. And a positive religion uh, is a religion in which 
we find comfort in the certainties that are promised to us. First John 3 and 14 says, We know that we have passed from death unto life. There's no guesswork about it. There is no doubt, no hopeful uncertainties, no probabilities. Ah, uh, we have a religion uh, that is positive. There are certain things that I'm so sure of that I don't need to wonder or hope or reckon about them. I want to submit to you, incidentally, submit to you the our uh, theses of Russell T. Spray in this positive religion. He says that there is a lack of sereneness in religion today. Russell Spray is a great writer and I freely adopted his outline for this series of messages on the kind of religion we need today. But he went on to say that many people are vague and uncertain about their spiritual state. I didn't need him to tell me that because I already knew it. And if you're almost in tune spiritually, you already know it. I asked my friend, where would he spend eternity? And he said, I don't know. Too many need a positive religion. But we get into this quagmire of uncertainty due to a insufficient, inadequate scriptural and spiritual diet. We have great spiritual malnutrition at every loop and corner in our communities, people are not eating the bread from heaven. And let me tell you this. When you go to your doctor's office, there are certain things that you don't have to tell him about your condition. He can size you up in three to five minutes and come pretty close to certainty as to what your problem, your main problem really are. And don't you think for one instant that you can speak or talk, or consult with a man of God, a called preacher of God, an ordained preacher, don't think for one instant that that preacher cannot read your spiritual condition. Don't take him two or three minutes. And we figure out just exactly where you are. My friends, we can be positive because of the certainties which we find in God's word. Ah, uh, 
we, as Second Timothy chapter 1 says, Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, I know in whom I have believed. We can be positive for we know in whom we have believed. And you know what? We had a teacher named Miss Edna Irvin. And Miss Irvin would say, when you know, you know, this is the way she said, when you know, you know, and know, you know, and know, you know, you know, whew, you'll never forget it. Huh. We know in whom we have believed. <laughs> You can't debate with me and argue with me with all of your uh, argumentative skills. You cannot refute uh, the I know in my positive religion. And I will say this. I find that a positive religion is a religion that removes all economic insecurities inside God's house. One of my friends in the African American Pulpit Society posted a question and I felt the need to respond to his question. He asked the members of the society to give him a good book, the name of a good book on tithing. One our uh, other preachers responded saying that there's a book out there about tithing called Common Thieves. I'm going somewhere with this. Just stick with me. But my response to his request was that the Bible is the best book on tithing. I recommended a certain Bible to him. And I went on to explain the academic process involved in book writing and how the authors and the publishers extract certain principles and embellish them and color them and put them on the market. You can write a book on tithing if you did the same thing that the authors on those books do. You can do the same thing. You need to read. And so I, what I did, I referred him to a certain Bible that I've used down through the years. And I went on to tell him of a friend of mine who tithed lump sum on $300,000 told him of my experience of tithing on 20,000, lump sum. But I wish I could find him to tell him today that that particular Bible that I referred him to, I referred another child of God to that Bible. And that child of God, my friend, tithed lump sum on three million the best book on tithing is the Bible. And that's what we need in this religion, this positive religion that we need in the world in 2019. I'm done. I'm going to get out of here. But we need a positive religion, a purifying religion where Jesus' blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness and all sin. You need a new lease on life. 
You need that guilty conscience uh, cleansed and purged. Your belief in Jesus Christ is how to get that guilty conscience cleansed. How to get saved, born again. It comes from the personal encounter that you have with Jesus Christ when you are born again. Will you say the sinner's prayer and simply tell him, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and I believe that God raised you from the dead. Would you be so kind and generous as to save my poor sin sick soul today? Jesus, through supernatural operation, will change your disposition, give you a new lease on life, born you again. If you just pray that prayer and then go ahead and acknowledge confess to someone else by phone, by letter, by message, by internet, email. But you are required to notify others of your decision for Christ. No room for closet Christians. You got to come public. You do that you can enjoy the certainties that I enjoy here. Inside the magnificent Greater New Bethel Baptist Church of London, Alabama, where Christ is always the featured attraction. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, he's able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. The only wise God to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Positive religion. What you get today. Thank you, my Lord.